pray that you would help us walk and live and serve you and others with all our heart in truth and in spirit. Thank you for the privilege of prayer as we lift up these names who've been called before the throne of grace. And also we know that in every heart and every life here today, there are issues that only prayer can handle. So we, through prayer, access and speak to you about the concerns. And we trust you and lay them at your feet. And we thank you that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now we join together in the prayer which you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Join me in the Coatsbury, or on screen perhaps, page 123, for Revive Us Again. We praise Thee, O God, for the song. Tucker Smith, April 11th, 1922, to November 26th, 2022, at age 100. 
a 75-year member of Salem UMC. Please remain standing as we honor Helen Smith. James Odell Oatesville Sr., March 21st, 1932 to November 26, 2022, age 90, father-in-law of Melanie Oatesville. James Jacob Morton Sr., February 14th, 1936 to January 2nd, 2023, age 86. He was a friend of Salem United Methodist Church and a member of Old Lebanon Church. Please stand as we remember James Jacob Morton. Ethel Van Dyke Reese, March 17th, 1935 to February 12th, 2023, age 87, sister of Charlotte Van Dyke Johnson. Please remain standing as we honor Ethel, sister of Charlotte Johnson. Lily Frances Hipkins, June 12th, 1936, to April 15th, 2023, age 86. She was a seven year member of Salem United Methodist Church. Please stand in body and spirit for Lily Frances Hipkins. Roy Earl Buddy Glass Sr., July 26, 1945 to August 6th, 2023, age 78. He was the uncle of my wife, Tina. Please stand as we remember, buddy. The uncle of Tina, Grisel. Stanley Dwayne Smith, Sr., July 31st, 1954, through August 6, 2023, age 69, stepfather of Tina Crisell and my stepfather-in-law. Um, please stand as we honor Stan Smith. Jack Medford McCullum Sr., May 9th, 1930 to August 15th, 2023, age 93, cousin of Will Henderson. Please remain standing as we honor Jack Medford Cullum Sr. Linda D. Bogle, December 23rd, 2023, age 73, is the stepmother of Kelly Box. Please remain standing as we remember Linda D. Bogle. Travis Jason Greer, May 5th, 1977 to August 26, 2023, age 46, stepfather of Taylor McCoy. Please remain standing as we honor and remember Travis Jason Greer. Denise DeRamir, friend of June Kenobi, April 26th, 2023. Please remain standing as we remember Denise, friend of June Kenobi. Charles D. Lillard, June 30th, 1970, to July 8th, 2023, age 53, the nephew of Charles Lillard. Please remain standing as we remember Charles D. Lillard. All 
rise in body and spirit to recognize our loved ones who are waiting for us in heaven. pray with me. Dear Lord, please keep the memory of those that have gone in our hearts. Keep their fire for life with us so we can remember them fondly always, Lord. And as you promised that we will meet them again in your shining castle in the sky, Lord. God, comfort us, hold us, and heal us. This first year is very hard for everybody. It doesn't get easier, it just gets culpable. Lord, we know that you have a place set for us, Lord. A place that is beautiful and divine and a place that we'll all be together again in your amazing grace and glory. And Lord, please bless everyone in this congregation everyone outside this congregation that has loved and lost. Lord, in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Eric. And Laura, beautiful music. Burl for getting all that together and all of you for sending in the names and cooperating with all of that. It was a meaningful service, a meaningful time. It's special for me uh, every year in whatever church I'm serving at the time, they do a very similar service. And it's always very touching to remember the ones who've gone on before. Heaven's not getting crowded because heaven is exceedingly roomy. And lots of things are happening in heaven. And God's grace is full and powerful and wonderful there. And we can look forward to being there someday. I hope you look forward to being in heaven someday, and I hope you have the assurance of your salvation that that's going to happen. That's going to happen with you because you know Jesus and because he guaranteed that we'd be there with him someday if we know him and have received him as Lord and Savior. I want to take a chance, an opportunity to thank all of you for the blessing you poured into Linda and my life last Sunday as uh, Brother Kelly came forth and, and spoke very kind words, exceedingly kind words, to us and presented us with a gift, a card, a gift, couple of gift cards, which were very generous and we're so, we're so blessed. And then into the fellowship hall for a, a kind of reception before the charge conference started and the beautiful cake that you provided there. And I was so glad to get off my diet for just a few minutes and uh, enjoy <laughs> a couple of pieces of that cake. It was very, very good. And your fellowship is extraordinary. You, you make uh, our time here at this church joyful and fun and and happy and and jesus is lord here and that's a solid wonderful thing to experience every week with you so glory to god uh i wanted to ask you if you'll turn to uh james chapter one today i want to say a few things to you out of james chapter one i'm gonna really uh, uh tailor my uh, sermon a little bit so that we can get out uh, on time because I know that stomachs start growling and so do uh, people sometimes when they don't get out of church on time. Uh, I haven't had many growl though, not from this congregation at all, but I'm, I'm blessed. I just want to read a couple of verses from the first chapter of James because I want to talk to you right now about handling difficulties. Actually, the sermon title uh, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Wall walloped in the head. And uh, that doesn't talk about being crazy. It talks about an experience I want to share with you that I had recently. I got walloped in the head. My brethren, this is verse 2, James chapter 1. My brethren and sisters, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience Brother Kelly is going to speak on patience next Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. Hope it's okay. I hope I didn't steal some of your 
uh, verses that we're going to use, but it, we can steady to hear it again. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all people liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to them. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let that person not suppose that they will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glorify, uh, glorify in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a, fl as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with the burning heat than it withers in gra uh, grass, and the flower falls off and its beauty's appearance is, has perished. So the rich man also, and he will fade away. May God add his rich blessing to the reading of this word, and uh, we are delighted. I want to share with you some thoughts about, about uh, how to walk through tough times and how to experience hardships. And, and uh, James does not limit this to spiritual experience either. He's saying pretty much across the board, everything, many trials, uh, various kinds of trials that we go through, and how we can walk with God so that those trials become uh, effective uh, ministers in our lives so that we can grow in character, God's character, so that we can grow in ministry to others and so we can walk with him more closely. You know, I hope, that God uses trials and tribulations to grow you up spiritually if we apply th what we're going through in our walk with Christ. If we just, if we just go through trials and tribulations with our, with our toughness and our determination and our brilliant way of handling life, then we're not going to have the fruit of the quality of the Spirit of God developing His character within us. But if we walk in Christ through the tough times, then he can develop his mercy and character in our lives in ways that we had not imagined. Several of you have lovingly asked me about the bruise on my forehead right here, uh, which was a, a good bit more visible last Sunday than it is today. However, I still have a bump on my head where the ladder hit me on the head. And I want to tell you about that. There was no damage to the ladder. I know you'll be glad to hear that. <laughs> I was using a leaf blower to clean the leaves out of my gutters. I'd climb the ladder, blow out the leaves, get back down the ladder, move the ladder down, get up the ladder, blow the leaves, and that process was working pretty well for me along the way, and, and I was uh, having to handle and, and balance a 33-pound, thir uh, 13-foot ladder with a 5-pound uh, stabilizing uh, a, uh, adapter on top of that. Maybe you've seen one of those. They're like big, uh, big arms coming across to help you stay steady. So I was using that, and I was moving along pretty good. That method, method worked well till I got to down the side of my house to where my uh, pilot, my van, minivan was parked. And I said, well, I don't want to have to use all the time it's going to take me to go in the house and get the keys and come back out here and move the van. That wouldn't be... That wouldn't, no, I'm not going to do that. I think I can squeeze this ladder, balance the ladder, and kind of go along with the ladder in between the van and my house. Starting to put a story together here of what maybe what happened. Are you right? So, so that's what was working. That's what I was doing, trying to squeeze in between the brick wall of the house. And inch by inch, I started squeezing uh, between the house and the van, balancing the 13-foot ladder with the five-pound adapter on top, and uh, just just about to the place where I needed to get with the ladder, holding it up, uh, I, I encountered the rearview mirror on my car, on my van. And now I've got to go figure out how to get around that rearview mirror as I as I go down this way. And so I had to do just just one little. Uh, one little bitty uh, maneuver, and that little bitty maneuver would get me around the van. So I tried the maneuver, and, and uh, all I needed to do was that one. Well, the minor maneuver threw me off just slightly off balance, and that's all the ladder needed. And, and the ladder got ahead of me because I already had it uh, going, 
and it got ahead of me when I resisted because of the mirror, bumped into the mirror or something. And the ladder got, ladder got ahead of me just a, a smidge, and I wasn't able to keep it steady or keep it from falling because of the five-pound stabilizing device that was attached to the top rung of the ladder. Five pounds. Made it a heavy ladder. Started out 33 pounds, 38 pounds. Big difference. Oh, no big deal. So my initial response was to uh, at least to keep the ladder from hitting the car. As it fell, I was pushing the ladder away from the car saying, not the car, not the car, not the car. <laughs> and while at the same time I was trying to pull up on the ladder to keep it from landing on this, this stabilizing device and breaking it or, or bending it. So uh, that's, that's, that's what was going on. The ladder, as it passed by the vicinity of my forehead on the way down, I did not realize that my head was leaning forward slightly uh, directly in the path of the descending 13-foot, 33-pound ladder with a 5-pound stabilizing attachment on the top rung. But I did come to realize that my head was in the way rather abruptly when the ladder and my head connected. <laughs> and although I was uh, in a goodly amount of pain, I was neither unconscious nor bleeding. And so I pressed on with manly toughness to pick up the ladder again, 13-foot ladder with the th all that stuff, uh, and, and leaned up against the wall and kept on blowing we uh, leaves out of the gutters. So I had a sore bump on my head and a multicolored bruise on my head for a couple of weeks. And uh, thank you, those of you, I praise God for those of you that noticed that and said, Brother Thad, I hope you're all right with that bruise on your head. And I praise God for the rest of you who have been praying for your preacher all the time anyway, so glory to God. I was proud of myself that no ungodly words proceeded out of my mouth in that <laughs> process. I thank God for protecting me and, and for uh, from any more damage and for surely showing me the lessons that I'm going to learn through that episode in my life. So what do you do? What do you do when you encounter various trials? The scripture says, uh, uh, count it all joy, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. What about various trials? I've been a preacher, I've been a preacher for accounting school and all, I've been a preacher for 50 years. Uh, to, to dis and I want to discern what the Holy Spirit's saying to me every episode of my life. I want to listen. I want to learn. I want to grow in the Lord still. So I've been a preacher all this time, and I've been a human being a lot longer than I've been a preacher. Now, I've never met another human being or another preacher who has not and does not have various levels of difficulty scattered through their life at all times. Every one of us have various difficulties that we deal with all the time, all the time. Now, there are over, at this point, over 8 billion people on planet Earth. All of them are encountering difficulties and various trials, all of them, all of them. But the difference in the difficulty and trials is not really the trial that happens but how we handle the trial that happens, how we go through the experience or the trial that we're having at the particular time. All the people that encounter difficulties, we handle difficulties either in Christ or without Christ. Have, not, have, have we not learned the lesson, though, of the significant importance of handling our difficulties in faith with the Holy Spirit, or do we still depend totally on our toughness, our earthly wisdom, and our gumption to get us through all of life trials? Now, gumption and earthly wisdom and, and toughness, they're important, and we got to have all that. But if we use that simply for ourselves and, and not for the kingdom of God and not for our faith and not for the Spirit and not for others, then we lose out on a great deal of blessings and we find ourselves not walking and not developing spiritually very much at all. Living in Christ means that we're quick to trust in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, whether they're easy or tough situations that we go through. 
Christ is developed. Christ wants to develop us in, in our lives and bring us freedom and bring freedom to other people as we live and as we go and as we, as we walk this earth. He wants us to minister and he wants us to grow spiritually. And so the person without Christ is still going through the trials and tough times, but the Holy Spirit has to act differently and treat differently with that person. The person that doesn't walk in faith, Christ has to bring to the place and work in, in their lives in the place that they can see how, how hard it is to live and how difficult it is to be a Christian without walking with Christ. You can't do it. It's impossible. We have to walk in faith. Uh, uh, the word says that the just shall live by faith. Those who are righteous have been called to live by faith. And so, as we read in the first couple of, uh, second and fourth verse, second through the fourth verse, uh, that consider it all joy when you fall into various trials, there's no if in that verse. It doesn't say consider it all joy if you run into trials and, and various trials. It says when you run into various trials. Consider it all joy. Let perseverance have its way that you may be mature and lacking nothing. James emphasizes the importance of maintaining a joyful attitude in the face of trials, understanding that the trials can lead to personal growth and development of perseverance in Christ. And one, of the, one of the reasons we have trials is because we are servants of Christ and developing into disciples of Christ. Maintaining a joyful attitude means that you're not overcome by anger anymore, or you're not overcome by anger as much as you used to be. So like many display in our lives that, that anger is part of their life and they, they, they quickly move over into anger. And I know many Christians that I've served as their pastor who are quick to get angry and quick to blow up and just let their, their emotions control their lives. But God wants us to live bigger than that. He wants us to live in a way that, that we're under control and that the fruit of the Spirit is developing character in our lives. And so that we live in a way that after a while we recognize something strange going on in our life that, that, that I didn't get angry in this situation, but I didn't have to stri try to strive to keep from getting angry either, that I was just not angry. And I'm going, when I experience things like that, I'm going, Wow, I didn't get angry in that situation. Something must be happening in me. It's good. I'm glad that I can go through a situation without it affecting me like that. It means what the Bible calls the peaceful fruit of righteousness. It's not that I'm righteous, I'm not righteous, but Jesus' righteousness in me and in you is developing each one of us to the place where we become, we become doers of the word naturally. We become... Uh, developers of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives naturally so that the, the fruit of love is becoming a part of you rather than you having to think, oh, i got to walk in love. Here's my mother-in-law who came and stayed for uh, three days and she extended it to five days and I only had faith for three days. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> uh, I usually say that when she's not in the service, but <laughs> get by with it once. Anyway, so, so we need to begin seeing ourselves uh, <clears throat> developing the fruit of the Spirit in such a way that it is becoming a natural part of our spirit. Does that make sense? Uh, and, and, and over in the book of Hebrews, it's called, it's called, but not defined, it's called the peaceful fruit of righteousness because righteousness has a fruit that is developed, and that's the fruit. And we, we start seeing the, the character qualities of Christ becoming ours for real. And that's a joyful, wonderful thing. James 5, 1, chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, encourages us to do a few basics. Seeking wisdom, maintaining faith in God and His Word, and not doubting the Word of God. When we rely on our fleshly wisdom, not abiding in faith, we're doubting God's Word and God's willingness to help, and we hinder our ability to navigate life's trials effectively and be servants and ministers of reconciliation to other people. Verse 8 says, Let that, not per that person not suppose that they will receive anything from God. The person that decides they're not going to walk with God in faith, the believer. The double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. We do try to listen to God's wisdom, don't we? 
we do look for lessons when we get hit in the head with a ladder, don't we? The ladder is a metaphor for anything you go through that's tough or hurts. What does the Holy Spirit want me to hear? What lessons does God want me to learn? Maybe it's a lesson about safety, the way you handle the ladder. Or maybe it's a way about a, a, a blind spot in my life that I didn't know I had that I need to see. And so I encounter something, and the Holy Spirit wants to show me something about my life that I didn't know was there before. He wants to grow us. The Holy Spirit wants to grow us up through our struggles. And we will grow up healthily if we determine to grow with Christ and in Christ. What a precious, precious prepositional phrase, in Christ or with Christ or by Christ. What about you? Maybe somebody cut you off in traffic. What do you do? How do you react? What happens on the inside of you? Or where were you? Maybe you were overcharged in a, in a, uh, a store and had to pay more until you got home and saw the bill and, and you got it figured out. And you got, maybe, you got, maybe you were peaceful through that or maybe you were angry. Or maybe you had a flat tire on the interstate or maybe your transmission fell out from under your car. Or maybe you had to, be, had to rush your son and daughter to the emergency room and discovered that they had, needed to have an appendectomy in the middle of the night. Maybe you found out that you needed heart surgery. Or maybe, you, tragically, you lost a loved one, as we were speaking of this morning. What goes on in you when various difficulties rise up like a cobra in the weeds? Does panic strike you? Or can you turn to God in faith and trust him through this tough time or both? Do you know he's got this? We need to learn to lean heavily on those everlasting arms. James 19 through 27, James 1, 19 through 27 is full of practical guidance on how to live, in one's, live one's faith out in the world, including being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. And we all, uh, are, as well as caring for orphans and widows in their need and keeping oneself from being polluted by the world. This entire area of ministering to others in our distress and in their distress strengthens us when we've already gone through, when we may have already gone through the tough times and, and trusted the Holy Spirit uh, for strength and perseverance. Many years ago, I went through a divorce and I have some understanding and counsel to give those who are facing or have experienced that tragedy in their life. Others have endured other serious, serious distresses, losing a business, faithfully living through a long, and Ill, a long uh, illness of a friend, a child, or a spouse, loving, lovingly being there for an aged parent until, you go, until they go on to be with Jesus, Remembering and working through painful memories and unforgiveness and bitterness caused by neglect as a child. There's a precious scripture on, the, on your bulletin front and above the order of worship. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we may be able to comfort those in trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Isn't that a beautiful verse? God wants to comfort us, but he wants to use and redeem our issues of our lives so that we can comfort others through the experiences and issues that we have faced. Some other, some, uh, another purpose, that same purpose, uh, is, is, uh, is also very strong in the word of God so that God God redeeming our painful experiences in life so that we can in turn help others through their sorrows whether it's a friend or a sister or brother the Holy Spirit emphasizes the importance not only of hearing the word but also doing the word living it out in our actions including showing care and concern for those in need and maintaining personal integrity as we walk with God. So, if you need any counsel about how to walk in faith after getting hit by a, a heavy ladder on your head, just give me a call. <laughs> but the one who was despised and rejected by mankind, the man of suffering 
and familiar with pain. The one who took up our pain and bore our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgression, crushed for our iniquity, punished and, and that a punishment that bought our peace was upon him. And by his wounds, his, his beatings, his stripes of the whip, we are healed. The one upon whom the Father laid all of our iniquities, this one who loves us and cares for you, this is Jesus, the one who will always be there for you in happy times and in deepest agony times. He understands when we cannot understand. Jesus is always, always for you, even when we're not for him sometimes in our hearts. He's here today to make his own blessing for you and to make you his own again. If, if you will say to him, yes, Lord, I surrender all. I cast my cares on you. And in this holy covenant meal we're about to receive, I declare that you are my Lord and the Lord of my life forever. In the great name of Jesus, amen. You are invited to come and receive Holy Communion. We take great joy in, in sharing communion together uh, every month, but, but as Methodists, we can share communion anytime, as many times as we want to. There's no restriction on that. I invite you to turn to page 26 in your hymnal. We'll go through the first part of this communion service, the, the blessing of the elements and the confession of sin. Page 26. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, including me, and are in love and charity with your neighbor, neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, shall we pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickednesses, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's spend a moment, please speaking to God about our own sins and the issues of our life that we need to confess that might get in our way and his way of ministering to us. Shall we pray in silence? Oh God, oh God, you have said that we should confess our sins because you are faithful and just. And if we confess our sins, you, you will forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Astounding. We receive that as truth 
and we confess to you our sins, O God. And in the confession, we receive once again your righteousness into our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you have come to make us the very righteousness of God in Christ. So we are confessing that we are in Christ, trusting, not in our flesh, not in ourselves, but in you, O God. Thank you for this communion service, and thank you for the elements of bread and juice, which we receive by faith, reminded of your suffering and passion and death for us. And we celebrate again the glorious resurrection in our hearts as you came forth from the grave and brought us with you in Jesus' great name. Amen. You are invited in just a moment to meet us here in the side and uh, receive Holy Communion. There's a little bowl here that you may put your cup in after you get through, but feel free to also to receive the elements to come to the altar or there, receive communion, however you want to do that. This is a Methodist church, but this is not a Methodist communion service. No, it's nothing that doesn't even exist. This is a communion service open to
We are blessed uh, to be able to receive communion together. The altar is still open. You may remain at the altar as long as you wish. And uh, we're going to close our service now with a final hymn, Shalom to You. And Shalom uh, is a word of peace, a, a Hebrew word that uh, is peace and uh, greetings and also uh, a departure word. So we are blessed in this word. And we give thanks. If you'll rise in body or spirit and join me for shalom to you. Now may the grace of God, the love of the Spirit, the communion and presence of Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you go forth from this place, and may you encounter his love as you go through this week and be drawn even closer to him as your mighty Savior, Lord, and empower and sustainer. In Jesus' great name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.